Hello, good afternoon. I'm Dr. Cuthbert Sebastian. I'm an emergency doctor who works at the Joseph and Franz Hospital. Um, thank you for the Care Nursing Agency for having me today to present on the topic of seizures. Um, so, okay, so let's begin. Um, so what I want everyone to understand from this presentation is what a seizure is, um, the different types of seizures, how they present, um, what can cause a seizure to happen, how can we manage these seizures, and the complications of seizures. Okay, so question to the room. What is a seizure? What's your general understanding of a seizure? Mm -hmm. Yes? For instance, some may have silent seizures. Okay. Where they actually think that they're actually looking at you. Okay. They're having a seizure or some could fall on the floor. Mm -hmm. Their tongue coming out or they fall out or Okay. Okay. So those are some signs that a person can possibly be having a seizure. Okay, so scientifically a seizure is when your multiple neurons, so your brain is made up of a bunch of neurons and cells that fire electrical current and sends information between the different cells in your brain and that's how your body works, thinks basically and how your brain functions, right? So a seizure is basically when these neurons misfire which results in disorganization of the electrical discharge in the brain, right? And that would result in muscle twitching, spasms, change in mood, change in behavior, altered consciousness because your brain is misfiring. So that's why everything's going haywire, for lack of better words. So that's basically what a seizure is. So let me ask you another question. What is the difference between epilepsy and a seizure? Is it not the same? Not exactly. Anyone have any ideas? No? Okay. So a seizure is a single occurrence, whereas epilepsy is a neurological condition characterized by two or more unprovoked seizures. Okay, so it's two or more unprovoked seizures, then you have epilepsy. So it can be brought on by certain triggers, like let's say flashing lights, loud noises, stress, by triggers. All right, so a single occurrence seizure is usually brought on by a direct cause. Like let's say this person had, let's say a brain tumor. You take the brain tumor out, the person no longer has seizures, so they don't have epilepsy. Okay. So what causes seizures in a baby? What causes seizures in a baby? So there's so there's many different things. It could be um, inherited um, conditions that can lead to seizures. Fevers can cause um, seizures in babies. It's called febrile seizures. Um, different things like adults, um, electrolyte imbalances. Um, like we mentioned before, a brain tumor can cause seizures in babies. Trauma can cause seizures. Infections, meningitis. When you have an infection of um, basically the, the nervous system in the spine and around the brain. So many different things can cause seizures in babies and adults. Uh, we'll get to all those different causes soon. So how... So root cause actually determines if it's seizures or epilepsy then? Well, yeah, basically. Mm. It, for lack of better words, yeah, basically. So if you have one on one seizure, that's... Unprovoked okay. seizures. Unprovoked seizures. Yeah. Okay. So, does anyone know how we group seizures? So, there's... Okay. So, the International League Against Epilepsy has a classification it brought out a couple of years ago to make it easier for people to understand because I'm sure people have heard of simple seizures, complex seizures, all those different ones, generalized focal seizures, um, si absent seizures. And so what they did is they grouped it into three broad groups. So you have generalized onset seizures where this affects both sides of the brain. So remember when I told you 
what happens is there's a misfire in the neurons in the brain that carries the information. In generalized seizures, is misfiring on both sides of the brain. Okay? Um, there's focal onset seizures. The difference is that there is just a misfire on only one side of the brain, or one part of the brain, specifically. And then there is a third one, which is called unknown onset seizures, when the beginning of the seizure is not known. Um, and it can be later diagnosed to generalized or focal seizures. So that can be due to, if no one saw the person having a seizure, it can be labeled as an unknown um, onset seizure. Okay? So you can dive deeper into the types of seizures. Like there's very, there's a lot of terms. Um, so let's start with um, focal onset seizures. So you have seizures when you're aware that you're having a seizure and one way you're not aware that you're having a seizure. All right, so you have impaired awareness. Um, and they usually classify them based on a motor or a physical response, so whether this person is perhaps twitching, jerking, or non-motor responses where they can have um, emotional change, behavioral change, um, their, their mood can change, they can get numbness, tingling, feeling, um, hallucinations, visual impairment. So those are non-motor um, changes that can happen if you're having a seizure. And both can be either aware, you can be aware or you're conscious, or your awareness can be impaired. Then there's general, generalized onset seizures like we discussed. These, these individuals are usually impaired. The awareness is impaired. Okay, so they're not conscious. And it, again, it's the same thing, motor and non-motor symptoms. And the same thing goes for unknown onset. Like we said, unknown onset can either lead to general or focal seizures. So how do you guys know if a person is about to have a seizure? Have you ever heard the term of aura? Someone's having an aura? Yeah, so it's, it's a feeling that this person can have before the seizure comes on. Um, so, um, so our aura is actually a focal aware seizure like we just spoke about. So it's actually a seizure before the person leads on to a, another seizure. That's, that's actually what the aura is. It's called a focal aware seizure. So it's in one part of the brain. The person's aware and it leads to another seizure. And so usually signs of this, of an aura, could be a feeling of deja vu, like this has happened to me before. Um, they can get an unusual um, smell or taste in their mouth, um, an intense feeling of fear or joy, a feeling of a wave going through their head, stiffness or twitching in a part of the body, numbness, tingling like we mentioned before, um, a sensation that the arm or legs are bigger or smaller on the body, um, visual disturbances like fat flashing lights, hallucinations, double vision. And that's what an aura is. Okay? And it usually leads into the generalized seizures or another focal seizure. Okay? Um, so generalized seizures. Um, so tell me, what, what are the symptoms of seizures? Does anyone know what the symptoms of a seizure can be? So we divide it, we divide it into motor, motor symptoms, and non-motor symptoms. Most, well, most times it's an aura. You can okay. feel them with the aura. Mm -hmm. And then you, they have a, like fine tremors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes. So the aura, like we just mentioned, is actually a focal aware seizure. And that happens before the onset of the other, the other seizure. So the aura itself is a seizure, and it leads to something greater. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and like you said, 
they're shaking and trembling and twitching. So there are different terms that we use. Um, we use clonic, right, which is called, which is basically a sustained rith rhythmical jerking movement. I'm sure many people think of that when they think of seizures. Um, there is atonic. Basically, the muscles become weak or limp. There is tonic, where the muscles become tense or rigid. So when you say, I, how I remember it is tonic, tense. So I, I just think tonic, rigid. Um, myoclonus. So it's just brief muscle twitching. So you see the muscles just twitching and twitching. And then there is spasms. So non-motor symptoms. So like um, the individual in the back just mentioned, they can be staring. So then that's an absent seizure. They're just staring into space. They're blank. Um, and there is, that's a typical presentation. And then there is atypical or meaning unusual in presentation where they can be staring, but they're, sometimes they're able to respond, which, which is atypical, so it's unusual, okay? Or sometimes they have these behaviors where they're just rubbing, rubbing, just repeating certain movements, rubbing their hands, clapping, fidgeting, snapping their fingers, any type of unusual movement. And that could be a sign that this person is having a seizure. And not many people would just see that and say, oh, this person is having a seizure, you know? So hearing someone prior to having the seizure, yes. they would urinate themselves. Yes, and, and so that's another symptom of seizure. So a se like remember the neurons misfire in the brain, right? So everything is, isn't working properly, it's disorganized. So holding your urine is actually a function of your nerves. So if the brain is misfiring, you can't hold your, you can't hold your, you can't hold your urine. Um, some 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 people actually um, defecate, so they stool themselves because they can't control um, their defecation or their urination they, because it's all controlled by your brain. Your, or, your, or more specifically, your autonomic nervous system. So basically, that's a system that automatically does things without us having to think. Okay? So the same thing goes for focal onset seizures. The only difference is it's in this one part of the brain. You have the same clonic symptoms, so the rhythmic, rhythmical jerking movement, the atonic symptoms, your, your limbs become limp, or weak, tonic, T, tense, myoclonus, um, the muscles um, start to jerk, um, and the automatisms, so the repeated movement like we mentioned before. Same thing goes for focal onset. The difference is, like we mentioned before, you can be aware or you can be, your awareness can be impaired. And an unknown onset presentation, basically goes for the both of them, okay? So, what type of questions would you ask to clarify the type of seizure based on what we've just discussed? What type of questions would you ask if you... How do you feel prior? Okay, how do you feel prior? Okay, so you're talking about the aura? Okay. Because some people actually will tell you they felt it coming. They felt it coming. So they will sit down. Some it's a sudden onset that some will say they feel they feel that kind of way. Mm -hmm. Just before they go that they will sit down. Or drop sit down. Okay. And then you know, it comes down. So when you catch them then they have to the lesser um mm. risk at falling. Falling or injuring themselves. Yes. Okay. Because they have been having these seizures so long. Mm -hmm. That they, you know, them less risk for themselves, mm -hmm. and some it comes on, you know, suddenly. Yes. They just feel this, and they can't do anything for themselves. Mm -hmm. you know, as some people actually go in the atonic state, don't remember anything, mm -hmm. themselves. Yep. Bite up the tongue. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Any other questions you would ask? Um, some would say they have, like, they have a pain in their stomach. Yes, you can. You can have an uneasiness in your mm -hmm. stomach and an easy stomach feeling mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Any other questions you would ask? <coughs> to clarify what type of seizure this person is having. So let's say um, you, you have a relative and you had uh, someone else with the relative who saw it happen. What, what questions would you ask that person who was with the relative? How long? <coughs> okay, so yes, you want to know the time. How long has yeah, this yeah. been happening? Yes. Sorry? If they had a fever. If they have a fever, okay. Especially in children febrile. because febrile seizures happen. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Sometimes they hit their head. Mm -hmm. So you want they have any tongue bite off. Yeah, so you want to bleeding. Yeah, so you want to know if they hit their head, um, how they fell, etc. So you really want to Okay, if they were unconscious. So if they were aware or conscious because remember that's gonna tell you if it was it could be a focal or it could be a general. All right. Um, so let me just list a few questions that to clarify. So was there any warning before? So like the aura, like you mentioned, um, what did the patient do during the seizure? So were they fidgety? Um, was, it, was it just, they was tense, stiff? Were they shaking? Were they frothing? Did their eyes roll back? Did they urinate themselves? Did they defecate themselves? Um, does, did they vomit? Yes. Was there anything there that triggered um, the seizure to come on? What were they doing? You know, was there like a flashing lights there that could trigger it? I mean, some, some shows or movies say if you have epilepsy or seizures, you, you know, you should be careful because this can trigger it, right? They give that warning before the show. Um, how, did the, how long did it take for the patient to get back to their normal self? Okay, how frequently do these seizures occur or is it the first time? And like you mentioned before, how long did the seizure last? So these are very important, this is very important information you need to know because how long the seizure lasts means more damage to you because it can also mean lack of oxygen to the brain and it can cause brain damage. So that's very important. So if a seizure lasts for, let's say, over five minutes, that, that's a sign you need to carry this person to the hospital immediately because they need certain medical attention. Okay? Um, is a patient on any medication for the seizures as well? That's important. So is the medication working? Have they been taking it regularly? So what are the causes of seizures? I know we mentioned a few, but let's get down to the actual causes. What are the causes of seizures? Brain damage. Brain damage? Okay, so I use, I use, a, I use a, a little acronym. Um, it's called TIN CAN BED. Okay? TIN CAN BED. Mm -hmm. That's what I use. So T is for trauma. I is for infection. N is for um, neurological. C is for cardiovascular. A is for autoimmune. N, N can be for, um, oh, no, sorry. N can be for um, neurovascular. Um, can, can I be B? Um, B is for, hmm. Let me see, let me see, B is for, uh, sorry, but E is for endocrine and D is for drugs. The B slipped my mind, but yeah. So what can possibly cause, using that acronym? 
a lot of things can cause seizures. Nearly anything can cause a seizure. Okay? So, what do you think? List, the, list five. And just a trauma, a leap to the head, you can get a mm -hmm. leap, um, surgery. We had a patient the other day, and I noticed that he was fitting for like um, 35 seconds mm -hmm. straight concert. Mm -hmm. He was just like a minute apart. Mm -hmm. He actually died, you know, that's brain damage. Um, just trauma. Sorry? It could be hereditary. Yeah. Like you said, um, certain diseases, like infection. Yeah. If you have a high infection, your WBC is very high, mm -hmm. which is a white blood cell count is elevated. Yeah. That can trigger um, seizures. Yeah, so like meningitis especially, yes. because it's a direct infection of the nervous system, encephalitis. Infection in the brain that can cause it. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Eh? You have um, overdose of drugs. Eh? Overdose of drugs. So drugs like illegal drugs, mm -hmm. and and legal drugs. Mm -hmm. And legal drugs can cause can lead to seizures. Oxygen, oxygen deficiency. Oxygen deficiency. So. Um, perhaps this person have, can have asthma or COPD and they're not getting enough oxygen and that leads to a seizure. Yeah, so many things can trigger. Well, they're, they're more common than we think. Yeah, blood and like the a certain amount of blood loss. Yes, definitely. Hemorrhage, Hemorrhage can definitely cause definitely cause seizures because when you have hemorrhage you have, you ha you have la oxygen. lack of oxygen mm -hmm. and then you also have a problem with your electrolytes so your sodium your potassium okay, electrolytes are one of them today mm -hmm. no electrolytes no because your neurons use electrolytes to fire mm -hmm. so if i have a low sodium my neurons can't fire properly and then that causes the misfire and it messes up everything and it causes this disorganization. Yes, so high potassium can cause heart problems as well. Yeah. So there's genetic causes like we mentioned, hereditary, head trauma, um, stroke can cause, can, cause, can cause seizures because it leads to damage to the brain. And then like we mentioned before, the misfires, the disorganization. And that's how, that's why the seizures happen. We mentioned infections, yes, and brain bleeds from head trauma, or it can be spontaneous, you never know. It can happen without any type of trauma. Maybe you, you have, it may be on certain medication that causes, causes you to bleed, you know, that can happen. Electrolyte imbalances, like we mentioned, the sodium, Low blood sugar can cause seizures. Certain allergies. Certain allergies. Allergies. If you have an extreme allergic response, it definitely can lead to seizures. It definitely can lead to, to seizures. Um, usually they would get into shock, mm -hmm. and then you can have a subsequent seizure based on that. Asthma, like the asthma, because the allergies would cut off the the airway as well okay. yeah so it could cause okay. swelling in the throat mm -hmm. and lack of oxygen mm -hmm. so a brain tumor can cause a seizure as you can imagine because it's taking up space in the brain or it's compressing the brain um, or other um, space occupying lesions so there's different things other than a brain tumor that can that can occupy space in the brain so you can have infections um, para, para, parasitic infections, usually, usually in people who are immunocompromised. Um, it could be from things like diabetes, it could be things like from HIV um, or other immunocompromised states. There, there's dozens of them, some that you're just born with where your body doesn't create the, the, white, the right um, white blood cells to fight off infections those type of things. 
Um, so medications can leave you immunocompromised. Steroids can leave you immunocompromised if you take too many steroids for um, different diseases like lupus. Lupus leaves you immunocompromised as well. Okay, so different things can somehow lead, lead you to a path of possibly having seizures. Um, some medications, some, some pain medications can lead to seizures. Some pain medications. Antidepressants. It can be a trigger for seizures as well. Antidepressants can lead to seizures. And the funny thing is, seizures can lead to depression. Mm. But a psychiatric patients always come along with seizures. Yeah. Find a lot of psychiatric patients. Yeah, they, they can. Yeah. Alcohol abuse. Mm -hmm. yeah, there is no. Can, can, lead to, can lead to seizures on both, on both spectrums. So you can have, when you're too intoxicated, it can lead to a seizure. When you withdraw yourself from alcohol and you don't have a drink for a while, the withdrawal, then you can lead to then you can lead to a seizure. So when you withdraw yourself from alcohol, it's very important that you're monitored and actually within some type of care when you're withdrawing from alcohol because it can lead to some horrible symptoms, such as seizures. Um, illegal drugs, like we mentioned before, can cause seizures. Cocaine, amphetamines. Basically, any type of legal drug, um, illegal drug, and some marijuana. recreational drugs. Marijuana can lead to seizures. Marijuana can lead to seizures. Okay, anything can trigger um, something in an individual, especially one that's predisp predisposed to getting seizures. So, we mentioned everything about seizures for the most part in a general sense. So tell me, how do we know this is a seizure? What can possibly be something else that can mimic a seizure? As so, because we, we asked specific questions before to clarify what a seizure is. So what can possibly mimic a seizure? Especially if you're not around the person. The person might come in. I work in the emergency department. Some, some people might say, oh, they, they blacked out. I think they had a seizure. But they didn't see what happened to them. They just know they blacked out. What, what can possibly be another reason why this person blacked out or have had similar symptoms uh, like we mentioned before? Low blood sugar, a hypoglycemic attack. Cold because some of them they call a shiver. Mm-hmm. Could be an they can't talk, so they can't say they cold. Mm -hmm. Could be an aneurysm. It could be an aneurysm. So yes, you you can have an aneurysm which causes lack of oxygen to the to to the brain, and that basically causes you to pass out. Okay. All right. Anything else? Sometimes when they had a guy who used to always was just talking back, he was a type of a retardant too. Okay. But then sometimes they said like he had like a nothing about allergic reaction. Whatever he eat, what used to chill it off. Yeah. Allergic reaction. Spice, just say any spice or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, I agree with you. Okay, so I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna give you a list of certain things that can mimic seizures that you may possibly run into. And that's why it's so important to ask those questions that we asked before. And even if we were not sure what happened to this patient, that's why it's also important to monitor the patient if we're not sure exactly what happened. If no one was there, if they just found the person on the floor, they're not moving, and then they get back to consciousness, okay? So, you can pass out, or what we call syncope, when you faint, you black out. Um, that can be due to a heart problem. This person may have had uh, an arrhythmia, so when the heart doesn't pump right, that causes a lack of oxygen and you pass out. Um, you can have hypoglycemia, like you mentioned before, and a migraine. Yeah. <laughs> Migraines um, 
can can present like like seizures. So migraines can cause hallucinations, visual hallucinations. You get an aura as well as like a seizure, a migraine aura. Um, you have vascular um, conditions like a, a, a TIA or a transient ischemic attack where basically a clot goes to the brain, you get a lack of oxygen and it dislodges, it breaks free and, and then it's fine. some people think that could be a seizure. You have sleeping disorders that, peop that many people don't even think about, um, like narcolepsy. You know, some, some, some people um, that I know personally in my family has, have narcolepsy, so they sit down too long and they're not active, they just pass out. <laughs> you know, you could be sitting down, you just pass out, and then they wake up. <laughs> yeah, it's, it happens. Um, they have movement disorders. So they have movement disorders where sometimes people shake a lot, you know. Um, yeah, but if people if people see someone shaking, they're like, oh, they're having a seizure. So I saw him shaking, having a seizure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, so that's why it's very important to ask the specific questions, the specific questions, because you never know. Because you see someone shaking there. For all I know, they're just having a seizure, mm -hmm. you know? Um, gastrointestinal conditions in babies, all right? So in babies, when you have reflux, mm -hmm. <laughs> when the baby's having a reflux, it, it might look to you like they're having a seizure, but mm -hmm. they're just having, <laughs> they're just having um, regurgitation of the, the acid, the stomach mm -hmm. acid, and it looks like you're having a seizure there psychiatric conditions so panic attacks breath holding spell so some sometimes people hold their breath as some form of reflex that, 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 that has a, a different name that's attention deficit <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um malingering so some sometimes people um so the psychiatric disorder where sometimes people pretend to get these things, you know, to get to get to get um, out of certain situations. All right. So this this. <laughs> but yeah, you have to give them the benefit of the doubt because if they are having a seizure, that you you, you can. You know, so you have to make sure that they're not having a seizure, make sure they're okay. You know, some of them, they fabricate it so well. And they will tell you after yeah. it was not, and it they will tell the reason yeah, they for them. Them. You can't it. just say that it's they they're not having it. You have to make sure this person is okay. Yeah. Okay? Okay, so how do we investigate seizures? Like, what tests can we do? The lab tests for whatever medication they are on. Yeah, so whatever medication, so the drug levels, yes. um, whatever medication they're on. You see to see if there's an um, infection. An infection. Yeah. And you, the chemistry. The you chemistry. Have to look at the heart. Electrolytes. SPO2s and this and that. Mm-hmm, SPO2. CT scan. CT scan or MRI, yeah. Okay, that's, that's basically it. Sometimes you can do a lumbar puncture, especially in, in babies. In the lumbar puncture. So in the lumbar punct, you look for an infection there, in the in the fluid, in this the cerebrospinal fluid, and one very important one we miss, the EEG. Yeah, so that's the. Oh well, definitely we we have to. Anyone who has a a seizure, especially more than one, definitely need to do an EEG. Um, it measures the brain's electrical activity, the waves. So, and like we said, that's basically what seizure is, mm -hmm. misfiring. Mm -hmm. So when we see the EEG. Oh, um, lately, medical, because Dr. Babo does it. Yes, he's 
He's one that does it, yep. Yeah, so he just started because I don't, I don't see them do it from our end. No, we, 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 don't, we, don't, we don't do it. Um, yeah, no, 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 no. See it mm -hmm. So that's basically how we investigate a teacher. So we need to ask these questions. It's not really much of an examination we do, except if they hurt themselves. You know, if they hurt themselves, then... And then, you know, look for injuries or anything like that. So how do we treat seizures? Um, well, so for some, mm -hmm. that if they just have a seizure, depending on the type of seizure, like for a baby, mm -hmm. you won't really put them on no dilantin, but you will give them the, the um, um, acetafetamine for to help with the, the fever, to break down the fever, yep. cold bath, and you will in, um, educate the mother. Mm -hmm. as to do not let the child get a fever and to monitor it mm -hmm. and if it all goes up to come to the hospital as soon as possible yes but those who are on medication now you make sure that they they um, educate them and their relatives they have to take the medication and don't miss yeah now what we have observed just missing a night yeah can, can trigger it on yeah. yeah so basically the is to avoid the triggers mm -hmm. you have to avoid your triggers and understanding what type of seizure it is that this person is having, like you mentioned, the febrile seizure. The management of that is to keep the fever down. So if this child is having a cold, a flu infection, you, you want to, and you know they're prone to getting febrile seizures, then you need to make sure that they're, they're taking medication that will keep the fever down and that won't trigger the seizure. All right, so, and there's, there's a million different types of medication with a million different ways it works. I'm not going to go into to each and, and every one of them, um, but you know, common ones, we have a sodium valparate, we have the carbamazepine, you know, we have the Keppra, um, midazolam, we use Valium, um, especially when the person is having a seizure to abort it, to abort, yeah, to abort the seizure from happening. So, what are the complications of getting a seizure? So much. It's a lot of complications. Brain damage. Brain damage. Retarded. They can have injuries, like mm -hmm. fractures. fractures and what's that, mm -hmm. falls and what's that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, some can they have memory loss. Yeah, some memory loss. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they can have difficulty learning. Mm -hmm. have diff after, time. after some time, they can have difficulty yes. learning. Mm -hmm. They can have something called aspiration. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, so yeah, we're... So Especially if they have a, a child from a baby with seizures. So what? They have a dedicated family who are going to mm -hmm. you know, encourage them in terms of learning. Mm -hmm. So what happens is when you aspirate, mm -hmm. you vomit, yeah. and then that could go into the lungs. So it comes up the throat, and it could go back into the lungs. And then you could get a lung infection from that. You can die from that immediately because if something's stopping your breathing through your lungs, mm -hmm. then, you know... Um, you get emotional health issues. So we mentioned before, it can lead to depression, mm -hmm. it can lead to anxiety, because your life could have possibly just yes. changed drastically. Mm -hmm. You know, um, maybe you can't drink anymore. Maybe you can't do this anymore because of your seizures. Yeah, you have to be careful because seizures can lead to drowning. Because if you imagine if you have a seizure while you're swimming, yeah. you know that's dangerous, you drive in. Mm -hmm. Some people get seizures, even when they're taking medication, they get seizures and they're not fully controlled yet. They drive in, they can lead to car accidents and then you can lose your life that way, you know? And then there's, there, there are complications of the medications themselves. So, you know, medications don't come, you know, side effect free. Every medication has a side effect, 
you know, some medications may make you feel nauseous, may make you feel sick, may, you know, you may have an allergic reaction to them. So those are some complications of seizures. Anything else you guys would like to add? Do you think we covered most of it? Oh, by the way, B is bone. <laughs> B is bone. <laughs> so bone, so um, you can have certain diseases of the bone that causes electrolyte abnormalities. Um, you can have bone tumors. Cancers can, can lead to seizures as well. You can have cancer as well. Sorry? Severe headaches. So migraines. Mm -hmm. Not all severe headaches are migraines. I know, I know. But not severe headaches can cause seizures. So it's a trigger. Severe headaches, um, tension headaches, um, so many different ones that we can get into. Okay, that's basically it for the general concept of seizures. Are there are any questions in general? Any questions at all? Did I cover everything? Mm-hmm. That's great. That's yeah. great. I know, I know. I don't have to do it. Um the symptoms you say is um you say can you call it fit. Can what? Fit? Um can something bed? Tin can bed. Tin <laughs> can bed. Tin can bed. Yeah. Because that's all we used to hear when I was growing up. Fit? It doesn't um, fit. Well, <laughs> it's just they had a name for everything. It's it's not really it's not really a medical term. I'm I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure myself. It's probably before my ha my time. Maybe when someone's having a fit there. Yeah, we see Jordan, but they say he fit in. Yeah, he fit. Okay. So that's the, you said the rubbing on your hand, and clapping and all of that. Automatisms, yeah. So they start to do some automatic movements, like this, and repetitive. Mm -hmm. They're just doing this. Mm -hmm. And it could be just staring at you. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that could be a seizure. She always, she most, most of the time her cats come watching her. She just said, when she was here, she had she pulled on a lot of tissue. Repetitive movements. Maybe they could be tapping or something like that or just fidgeting, some, something like that. It could be a seizure, yes. Silent seizure. Silent, yeah. yeah. So there's many, many, many types of seizures. Mm -hmm. Many types. There's a million different names for the genetic hereditary ones. But we, we just need to understand some key things. The type of seizures, so whether it's general, focal, whether they're awake or they're not awake, whether they injured themselves, if they fell, we need to know, th these are the important things we need to know, whether they are medication, whether they have pre-existing conditions, mm -hmm. what was their lifestyle before, maybe they drank, maybe they took drugs, they smoked, like, that could trigger the seizures. So we need to know these important things when we see these patients coming on, come into the hospital, or even if you're just a family member or a friend, you, you need to know this because it could really save their lives when and if they have a seizure. Family history is very important as well. Yes, family history is extremely important. So, doctor, every time a child has a seizure, an adult, they have to go to the hospital. Not so if, more, if it lasts more than five minutes. So, um, not necessarily, but I would advise, I would advise 
um, individuals here in this society to come to the hospital every time they have a seizure. Well, if you're well, it a medical it person, it you can, and you, uh, some some persons may not be a medical or personal, but has been dealing with it for like a number of years, and know know the child or children who has it, and know how they um how they take care of it. how they how, how they react with the child, and know that you know he gets out of it. But once, but I would advise them if if they have seizure after seizure, then you have to come. But sometimes it's one, and then you mm. just monitor them. They catch themselves, and that's it. Yeah. Then get another one, and they may have missed their medication or missed the time because sometimes the timing is mm -hmm. a factor. Yeah. You should take it every eight hours, six, two, and ten. They might take it six, but take it four o'clock instead of two, and that two hour alone is a trigger. You understand? But sometimes they have to take it they on time or sometimes in the hospital when I'm advising them and I will say, take it at least five, ten minutes prior to. Mm. So by the time you, you reach the hour, you're already kicking in, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it depends on the, ex the experience of the family mm -hmm. and the family's medical knowledge and the, the person's medical knowledge and their experience with seizures. So, I'm very, I always err on the side of caution, so. You personally think they should see I, pers I personally think That's they should, I, want to know if you're my, I personally think they should see some type of medical con consult. That's my, that's my personal view. Um, febrile seizures, um, once you usually get the temperature down and you can maintain it down and they stop, and they stop um, having a seizure, then you have a little bit more leeway with that. But if it's the first time they're having a seizure, you definitely, you definitely well, should, should you definitely should, should go to the hospital. Definitely. Any more questions? So children and adults get the same medication? Um, yeah, some, but uh, different doses. Some, some medication I wouldn't recommend for kids, um, just based on the side effects. Um, but basically, you can say yes, but it's just a different dosage. So it's just different levels of medication. Okay, so what do you do? So what do you do? Okay, so well one you have to time the seizure. Most importantly you have to make sure the person is in a out safe danger, out of yeah. safe environment, so out of danger, making sure that they don't hit their head or anything like that. Um usually turn the head on the side. Yeah, you want to turn them so they don't the aspirate. Yeah, so yeah. you put them in the left lateral position, right? So you turn them on the side in case they want to vomit. And then you usually just wait it out. Yeah. Well, you can, and if it if it's lasting standing, if you have something to put on the head, you put it on the or if you don't mm -hmm. have anything in that environment, you can put your foot mm -hmm. under the head. So they beat the head because sometimes the whole body Mm-hmm. Oh, so they don't so they don't bite the tongue. Yeah. So they don't bite their tongue. Yeah. You have to be very careful with doing that. Yeah. Because they could choke they could choke. You have to be very careful with doing that. I honestly I I I prefer them to have a tongue bite than them choking. <laughs> Then them choking. You have to be very careful what you put in their mouth when they're having a seizure. It, the, um, the doctor uses it to put a rag. All right, so and something that can't go down their throat. A whole rag in the mouth. Back then, I don't know what if they do the same thing. Um, I, I, don't, I don't see a problem with doing that, actually, because it's big enough so it doesn't go down and you choke. 
So I actually don't see a problem with that. I, I don't know the exact recommendations of what to put in the mouth right now. But that's I know. The neurologist is who said that always make sure that he has a rack. Mm -hmm. So you wet it and mm -hmm. then you put it in the mouth. Yeah, so that seems a lot safer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so seizures are a, a very expansive topic. We can speak about this for hours, actually. So what is a seizure? What's the definition? I don't think you two were here for the definition. You three, you three weren't here for the definition. Keisha? Keisha, you want to tell them the definition of a seizure? <laughs> All right, so just to refresh your memory, a seizure is when multiple neurons misfire, resulting in a disorganized electrical discharge in the brain. So that's what caught, that's a seizure, when the multiple neurons misfire due to whatever cause. All right? And because they're misfiring, it leads to muscle twitching, mood, mood change, behavioral change, emotional sensation. That's what, that's what a seizure is. The misfiring of neurons in the brain. So we can, just from that definition, you can see why the seizure looks like it looks. Because the neurons aren't firing properly. It's supposed to be like a well-oiled machine. Yeah, a well-oiled machine in the brain communicating information between all the cells and making your body function properly. So if a whole bunch of them misfire, your, your body, you know, is out of whack and then you start twitching, um, jerking. Um, loss of sensation, you can urinate yourself because you can't control that anymore. Like everything's, everything's out of order and that's, that's basically a seizure. A seizure in itself can kill you? Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, it can itself, well, the lack of oxygen like we mentioned, that could kill you. Um, falls, car accidents. Depending Aspiration. on the type and how you need your head damage yourself. Like, for what instance, do you mean the other things that the other factors mm -hmm. falling and then on its own, the new and behaving like that? Yeah, it can cause it, it can cause a massive, in, massive, back. massive. Usually, not just one one seizure kill you, but a prolonged seizure that mm -hmm. can cause um, massive brain damage or lack of oxygen. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's that's when that's when we enter into the danger, the yeah. danger zone. That's why it's important to time it. Yeah. difficulty learning okay <laughs> okay any more questions going once <laughs> going twice <laughs> okay I think seizures is a very important topic. Yes, very important. And everyone should know because you never know when you see see one happening. Uh, one time I was simply down the street and someone started to have a seizure. Yeah. Luckily I, I happened to be there and uh, we got everything under control. Well, I'd like to thank the Care Nursing Agency for inviting me to present um, on this topic. Um, I was actually heckling Keisha to, to let me present on this topic. <laughs> but, you know, I'm very grateful to always work with the Care Nursing Agency.
Oh. Ooh. Let me sit in my tilt of Corona. Good afternoon, everyone. Dr. Sebastian, and we have us here in Nancy. We'd like to present you this um, food board and thanking you for coming and giving a presentation this afternoon. Nancy, it does it, you know, it's very dear to your heart. Thank you. <laughs> All right,